to Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Ink Raven. We're here with another video, another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. You want to be part of it? Well, for the patrons, the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. If you don't want to, that's fine as well. I still love you. But for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, your questions, you can send them right on Patreon. For everybody else, if you're not a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. I got to start having like a cutoff date for questions from subscribers. At least a cutoff date if you expect your question to be featured this week. Uh, Cause question from subscribers gets crazy every single week, but I, I love y'all because y'all be sending some wild stuff, which we have a lot of fun talking about. I, I love just getting everybody's thoughts on stuff and just everybody's viewpoint. It's, it's a lot of fun. So thank you all, team. Keep it clean for just having some of the best thoughts, the most creative thoughts, uh, just a little bit of everything. Shout out to my guy uh, Garoon because he sent he let me know like, hey, engraving. Uh, for South Florida, the game's going to be on TV this week, so no stream. I remember last week during the uh, the Browns game, stream just went down on me a couple times. I'm like, man, but it's on TV this week, so thank you. So shout out to the Ravens for having a better record previously, and shout out to the Packers for continuing their good record because uh, both of those things help flex this game to 425. Anyway. Let's get into these questions because we got some great ones like we always do because y'all always bring fire. Final stretch. First question came from my boy, Droid209. He said, Uncle Gray, my brother, this Packers has been a little shook, but, oh, this Packers game has been, had me a little shook, but I'm hoping for week one, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of hoping for Lamar to return against the Packers, me neither. Uh, but they may know something we don't, or it's just a tactic to get them tr training and preparing for Lamar, but really Snoop will be playing. Exactly. That's all it is. My question is, what is the key path of victory? Well, the offense actually scoring some touchdowns in the first half, in the first quarter. That, like, the offense can't afford to get to no slow start. They can't. Um, that will be crucial for them to get a win against the Packers. Uh, and defense, not giving up the big plays. Uh, easier said than done, especially against Aaron Rodgers and them, but not giving up the big plays. That, that's what it is for me. He said, also, if we could stop going... <laughs> <laughs> he said, if we could stop going for two in moments we don't need to, I would highly appreciate it. I'm going to keep having patience for our boys, but man, it's hard. Uh, me being a Ravens fan and a Lakers fan has been stressful, but it's all part of being a fan, I suppose. Keep up the good work. Oh, and I'm going to need you to host another little barbecue flag football game. I'm ready to lace my cleats. All right, hey, one day, man. Next question came from Sky. He said, I've been watching your content for a while, and it's always a blessing to see you post throughout the day. I appreciate that. It's a blessing to be able to have somebody like you even watch it, so thank you. Uh, my question is, do you think the Ravens will still be able to compete with these higher-rated teams like the Packers and the Rams? Don't forget the Bengals and the Steelers. I mean, they're not necessarily higher-rated, but still, but I, I feel you. Um, but yes, I, I, I do feel like they can because this Ravens team, they do it all the time. They do it all the time, and it's like when these guys, like, we could feel like, all right, this, this team is down. They got all these injuries. Everybody hurt. Man, they, they ain't got this person playing, that person playing. Oh, man, the coaching staff, they've been doing this and that. But they end up having these competitive games with these teams who we think, how is that even possible? How did that happen? So I for sure think that they definitely will be competitive with all four of these remain, remaining teams. Um and he said, because knowing our Ravens, they'll play. Oh, OK, I should have read it first. He said, because knowing our Ravens, they'll play up sometimes, which I believe they'll do against these teams. But it's still scary to think about what's up next. Uh, also, dumb question. Who do you think the Rams will put Jalen Ramsey on? I, I think he'll just move. I mean, because who's he like? They, they still got Darius Williams, former Raven, too. But Jalen Ramsey could match the physicality with uh, Rashad Bateman. Um, they could try him with the speed with Hollywood. I think they'll have more Darius Williams on Hollywood, but they I don't think they'll really follow. I think they might have Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey play one side and have Darius Williams play another side. And I mean, we'll we'll just see. I don't yeah I don't think they'll be with a, a receiver the whole game though. That that's not a dumb question though by the way. And he said I was thinking Bateman, but you never know. Also, Bateman really got that new agent to scare the Ravens to use him. LOL. Hey, it worked. So far, so good. Bateman messed around and got a new agent. Then coincidentally, he get a hundred yards the next game. Hey, 
switch agents again this week, Bateman, and see what they do. Maybe he'll mess around and get 200. He said, uh, ho hope you and your family have a great rest of the day. And just like a key player on the Ravens every week, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Next question came from my boy Dylan. He said, hey, Engraven, hope you and your family are doing good and hope you enjoy your time with your family and friends. Uh, my question is, what if something changes on Lamar's ankle and he misses significant time and in that time Huntley goes on a tear and plays great football and wins a game or two in the postseason? Do you think we will see a QB controversy heading into next season that puts Lamar's job in jeopardy? No, I, 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 don't, think there, I don't think there would be. I do think it would be more controversy amongst fans than it would be with the team. Uh, this team should know. They should know. I can't say for sure that they do, but this team should know what Lamar can do, what Lamar has done. Uh, and with Huntley, I, I hope that this happens. If Lamar is out for an extended period of time, I hope that this happens. And I, I hope it, if as long as Lamar is out, I hope Huntley balls. I hope he just kills it so he can get an opportunity with some, somebody else next year as a starter that that's that's the biggest thing that i want well first and foremost this year i want Huntley to have success for the ravens as a team but also just as much i want Huntley to have success for himself uh as a player so he can get an opportunity elsewhere um he said i, I would hate to see it as i love lamar and think he is still only scratching the surface of how good he could be and i continue to defend him no matter what to my best friends who are steelers and cowboys fans in the past couple of weeks he has just made it hard to defend him sadly Hey, he hasn't been playing good. That's it. He ain't been playing good. But it, it happens. Every, every quarterback does not play good every single game. Quarterbacks have these droughts sometimes. They have these slumps. But it's all about how you get out of it. He said, thank you for all you do for Ravens Flock. Your videos make our day every day and give us all something to look forward to. Hashtag team. Keep it clean. Hey, appreciate that, Dylan. Thank you. The silver lining. Next question came from my boy, Louis, a.k.a. Tony Paulajan's cousin. Anyway, he said, Engraving, my brother, hope you and the fam are chilling. I'm writing in because I wanted to express my excitement for the next couple of weeks. Sorry if this goes a little too long. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at this email and it's, it's going. But anyway, he said, uh, I'll start with the defense. I think all these injuries are not as bad as we think. Oh, they're worse. Uh, we, yeah, we are pretty much out of Super Bowl contention this year. I, I wouldn't say that because you just you never know. But anyway, we are pretty much out of Super Bowl contention this year but i am loving the amount of reps and experience our youngins are getting that's a good way to look at stuff that's a really good way to look at stuff because yeah a lot of these guys who are playing right now they would not be getting these reps had everybody been healthy now we would of course rather everybody been healthy so these guys would not be getting these reps but it is what it is take the good with the bad uh and besides a couple of pass interferences, the first one was just garbage. And the sideline catch where the receiver made a crazy play, Chris Westry gave us a ton to be happy about. He was hip to hip with the receivers most of the game. And I know you always talk about it. My boy was tracking the ball while it was in the air all game. If he can stay healthy, I think he'll replace Tavon for next season. Keep him outside, maybe put Marlow back in a slot. No. Marlo is not a slot corner. He can play slot corner, but he's an outside corner. That's where he needs to be. I don't feel like Chris Westry will be a replacement for Tavon Young because Chris Westry is not a slot corner. He's also an outside corner. Now, he could remain with the Ravens, but uh, as far as Tavon Young, that'd probably be more Ardarius Washington. Uh, but anyway, he said at least solidify a uh, playing time for him next year. Brandon Stevens is an absolute stud. It's his rookie year, and he's playing good consistently. He's just going to keep getting better and better, and I, I just can't have him adapt, adopt in the Chuck Clark brick hand style of defense. <laughs> It got a little scary, that Browns game. I think he missed two wide-open picks. Regardless, he's a stud, and I can't wait to see his jump from year one to year two. Yeah, he has struggled a bit off and on this year, but overall, he's done all right, especially for the position that he's been put in. Uh, on to the offense, and most importantly, I'm ready to unleash these receivers, and I'm excited to see what Snoop can do. Start throwing B Bateman up, see what we really got in him, even though we all know he's a stud. Just took Hobbs and Giro a little time to figure it out. And good Lord, please, please have Huntley and Hollywood practice together. I can't stand another game of constant overthrows to him. We saw that lack of chemistry hurt us last year against the Bills. Yep, where Hollywood would have been gone if Huntley had just put it on him. Uh, now that game, Hollywood, he slowed up a bit. Like he's, he slowed up a tiny bit on a route, and that made a big difference. Uh, um, and we saw him multiple times in that Browns game. Yeah, they Hollywood would be open, but that, in the Browns game, yeah, I, Huntley just missed him. The, the chemistry is, is a little, little bit off. Not way off, but it's a little bit off. Anyway, our running game is trash, and it just got worse with Lamar out now. I wouldn't say that because um, I wouldn't say the running game got worse. I think it will still be in the same position that it was in because Huntley can run, and Huntley's healthy. Lamar, he can run, but he's not healthy. So his running has not been what Lamar Jackson running, the, the Lamar Jackson running that we know of. 
Um, so Huntley right now, healthy Huntley is a better runner in my eyes than a hurt Lamar. That's not saying that it's just because oh, some people, man, some people have been blowing some of the Huntley stuff out of proportion. But right now, as a runner, Huntley is is a better runner right now than Lamar because Lamar just he ain't the same right now. Something is off with him uh, again. But anyway, um. Because because of that, I want to see Snoop unleashed. Multiple 50-50 balls to Bateman over the next couple of weeks and more deep shots to Hollywood. And let's get Duve and Prochet in the mix. What else is there to lose? Well, games. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, and I think they'll do that. Again, we got to remember the situations that Huntley has, has been in. He hasn't been projected to be the starter in any one of the two games that he started in. It was all last second, last minute stuff. Bears game, Lamar got sick. Browns game, Lamar got hurt. So Huntley had to step in both times at the last second and, and be the hero. Uh, he said, we've seen Snoop can clearly give us a chance to win the game or actually win, uh, as we saw versus the, with the Bears. Snoop, Bateman, Westry, and Stevens are the truth. If they can all stay healthy, I'm excited for them to show out for the end of the season. Also for Lamar, I think we should sit him till next season, wait for all the boys to get healthy and get another draft class under our belt. Unless we make it to the playoffs, then Lamar probably uh, got to come back, but I don't want to risk anything. Playoffs or not, he shouldn't come back until he's 200%. That part, uh, I, I feel you on with him needing to be all the way ready. Like, all the way. Not like, oh, Lamar, okay, Lamar's 80, Lamar's 85. No, 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 no. That ankle needs to be all the way ready. Because Ravens, Lamar Jackson, nobody can afford any setbacks. Sorry for the long one in Graven. I had to get this off my chest. Appreciate everything you do, bro. Keep grinding. All love. Again, man, this is really, really long. It might be. <laughs> it's all good, man. This was, it, it was long, but it was all good. I got to cut my hair because that thing is looking rough. Anyway, next question came from my boy, Lord Valley. He said, what's up, Brody? Been a long time. Blessings to you and the fam. I got a long one for you. So, I got a couple of questions. Do you truly believe that if the Ravens kept Wink and started fresh without Giro and Hobbs, you will see an entirely new team? Well, for sure, because it will be entirely new coaches. So they will bring entirely new philosophies and an entirely new strategy. So for sure, they will definitely uh, be a new team. He said, second, do you see more players like Duve, Prochet, and Boykin being frustrated and wanting out on an offense due to playing favorite type of coaching? Yes. Yes, I do. 1,000%. Because players, they, um, they want to play. And we know the pecking order. We know the depth chart and whatnot. That says a lot, but... If players not being used, especially if a player is healthy and not being used, and, and it's it's hard because you can't and like you. All right, here's one play for you. 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 But it's players want to play. That's what they're in, in, in the NFL for. Not to just sit there and ride a pine. They they want to play. So yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Uh, third, excuse me. What are the odds we make the playoffs with no Humphrey and Lamar out for about two weeks? He said going against the Packers, the Bengals, Rams, and Steelers. They got a shot. They definitely got a shot. I think they get in for sure. I think I think they get in. Um, but yeah, they definitely got a shot. You win these last four games, obviously you're in. You go two and two, you can still make it in. You might need a little help here and there, but they can get in for sure. He said, honestly, I think we are out. I gotta see uh, if offenses. Oh, I gotta see our offense be hot and be lethal. Uh, and I think that our luck for the season has ran out. <laughs> Okay, so he is done with his season, it sounds like. Not taking care of business against the Dolphins, Steelers, Browns, and Raiders. Cost us our season, and we should have uh, won at least three out of four, uh, but bad coaching decisions led us to an L. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think the season is over, but, yeah, it, I, hey, it is what it is. He said, so, in this upcoming draft in 2022, we have 10 picks. One in the first, one in the second, two in the third, five in the, in the fourth a one and a six. I'm thinking towards draft already because Ravens cannot have another season like this. It is very unhealthy to stress like this. LOL. So the holes I really see are the entire five man line. Uh, Chuck and Stanley up for a career loss. Oh, OK. So free. OK. So he's just saying uh, he just feel like Stanley is done. We'll see. But th that's what I said is that I feel like they got to next year. They got to act like anything you get out of him is a bonus. Because you know his injury history. Um, so you got to go into next year like, not necessarily like Ronnie Stanley's not there, but almost like Ronnie Stanley isn't there. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Again, uh, he said, free safety. Move Elliott to the true box position. Well, first you got to resign him if you do that because he's a free agent. But what do you do for Chuck Clark? Let's see if he addresses that. Uh, get a coverage corner. That stresses the quarterback who... Uh, who... Oh, because I don't see another MP being there another two years, and Hump needs help. Okay. 
So he doesn't see him and Marcus Peters being there for another two years. They either restructure Marcus Peters. Something's going to happen with Marcus Peters. It could be restructured. It could be cut. We don't want it to be cut, but it could be. It could be cut and re-signed. It could be a lot of things. So we'll see. Um, he said tight ends, speed-wise and deep threat. So, okay, get a tight end with some speed. And he said uh, and get a coverage linebacker to help Queen and Bowser cover the tight ends in the backs. All right. So I believe our first two picks should be left tackle and guard. Get him out the way, but focus on blocking linemen. I believe anybody can run block. Uh, the second, third round should be a safety and a corner picks that will be starters because Clark got to go or be spelled out. His IQ is very low. Oh, wow. You think so? Why? Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, third and fourth round picks should be offensive line, which the draft is flooded with this year, unless he's talking about D-line because he just put line. Uh, and the rest of the picks spend on the linebacker or trade the two-fourths and the six for a third rounder. And get a solid edge rush or a second safety. Uh, Westry is a penalty headache. But with Westry, the penalties were bad. They were really bad calls. They were bad calls. He said, Ardarius Washington, we don't know. He said, Jimmy Smith probably going to retire. Levine probably going to retire. Chuck Clark might, might be traded. Uh, they may not be with us next year, so we got work to do. And yes, Averett is the punk of the secondary, but homie got hot and is coming around. So I ain't going to call somebody a punk didn't say they got hot. Uh, no, I, I, I ain't none of these dudes punks. I wouldn't say that. But anyway, he said, I'm happy he got a pick to boost his confidence. I feel if we do draft secondary, move uh, Marcus Peters to safety and let him go crazy. See, Marcus Peters, I think he would be a great safety. But now is not the time. It is it's too. It will be, I think he will be a tremendous safety. But you usually move corners to safety when they start losing that speed, when they can't quite keep up anymore. Marcus Peters ain't there yet. Um, and then his style of play. Uh, he... With his style of play, him being a zone corner, it's his smarts, they make up for a lot. So, but yeah, he it's too early to move into safety. Uh, and he said, I'd rather Marcus Peters gamble, that, and that's like Reed, than a 2021 blown play. And you know how that feels. <laughs> and lastly, Lamar was on pace to have 4,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards if he wasn't hurt. Up to the Browns game, but when you see one touchdown throws for nearly eight games, that's an eyesore and speaks to plays not being put in the end zone. And he says, sorry, had to get it all out. And man, you certainly did. Next question came from Jaquan. He said, what's up, Engraven? I'm just going to say what most of us are thinking, but don't want to admit Huntley is playing better than Lamar right now. Not saying he's better than Lamar in no way. He's just hitting his stride, and I think Lamar's been playing hurt. What do you think? I Like, yeah, Lamar's definitely been playing hurt. In my opinion, I think for sure. And Huntley, he is he playing better than Lamar? It's it's been very similar. It's been different and similar all at the same time. The situations have been very similar because the offense has not gotten touchdowns early on in the games, in the Bears game and in the Browns game. Well, Huntley came in I think second quarter, so can't really say much about that. Uh, but they ended up waking up late. Have we not seen that with Lamar as well? Now with Huntley, he has been getting the ball out faster, and he's um so that's been good. And he's been taking a lot of the, the the short stuff, and he makes he's been making quicker decisions than uh, Lamar Jackson. Um, so that's been good. He hasn't been overthinking. He's been playing instinctively. Lamar hasn't been playing instinctively. Uh, but let's again, we got to remember these these teams that they went against. They were preparing for Lamar. They weren't preparing for Huntley. So we hope Huntley has the same, actually even more success. Um, but now the Packers being first up, they will have prepared for Huntley. So we'll see if that changes anything. Hopefully not. Well, hopefully, again, hopefully the Ravens, they, they do even better this week. and put up a bunch of points and they go crazy. Hopefully they do that and shock the world, even though I won't be shocked if they win. This is one game. I don't know why it's so crazy to me, but I, I just I won't be shocked if they win. I really do expect them to win against the Packers. And it's crazy, but I do. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think you you not saying anything like super crazy right here anything next question came from my guy cj raven he said hey i hope all is well with you my friend i have a question regarding tylen wallace it may be obvious but i don't keep up very well on football so i wanted to know why you think the ravens haven't used tylen much on offense and if you think he still has a future here in baltimore thank you so much and god bless appreciate it i he's a uh what was he a fourth round pick yeah i think he was a fourth round pick but you gotta uh, understand the pecking order they signed Sammy Watkins as a free agent, veteran wide receiver. They already had Hollywood. Uh, they also drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round. So you know that he was going to be up high on the depth chart. 
They also had Miles Boykin, who had been there. Uh, they also had Proche. They had Duvernay, who had been getting involved a lot last year on offense. So this year it was going to be more the same, uh, if not even more involvement. So with Tylen Wallace being a rookie, it and, and the, the second rookie that they picked, the fourth-round rookie that they picked, I didn't envision a scenario where he would have much emphasis put on him uh, as an offensive playmaker for the Ravens. Uh, he, that's why he's not out there much on offense. That's why he's been primarily on special teams. So next year we could see something, but this year I, I wouldn't really expect much. And now we ended off with our patrons. First one up is Lynetta. She said, hey, how are you and the fam doing? We good. I got a question. Do you think that the reason why, uh, w that the, reason why the Ravens won't cut 78 or bench him is because he's a veteran and it will look bad on the Ravens? I'm just wondering what do you think. Thank you for all that you do. Um, no, I, I think it's just simply because he could be their what he could be their best option. He could be their best option at, at left tackle. Now next year we'll see, but this year like they're in no position to cut him uh, this year because that, that could be their only guy. And the last question came from my guy Nick Bricken. I appreciate you being a patron. He said, "Hope you're doing well." I just wanted to ask a quick question. People are using Huntley's success. As an indictment on Lamar. But in my opinion, he showed exactly what we've been talking about. In the Bears game, uh, they were bad until the two-minute drive. In the Browns game, Huntley was bad until we got down by so much that we had to spread it out and then run and hurry up. Isn't that exactly what Lamar has shown all season? We can barely get all of our receivers on the field each game, but we don't have enough backs and tight ends to fill a roster. But yet we refuse to play to our strengths. Harbaugh mentioned he was impressed with the receivers and thinks we can spread teams out moving forward. Question is, do you believe him or will we keep running double fake screens and QB draws on third and long? <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. What a way to end it off. Uh, and that's exactly, I, I agree with you 20, wholeheartedly. I, was, I don't know why I was about to say 24-7. But I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that because, yes, that we've been seeing the same thing from Lamont, from Huntley. The slow starts. And then they pick it up at the end. Now, this game will show us if, if things can be different. This game against the Packers. So, we'll see. But, will he asks, will we see anything different? Like, do you believe him? Because he said Harbaugh mentioned that we could spread these teams out moving forward. Do you believe him or will we keep running double fake screens and QB draws on third and long? We got to see. We got to see how much they'll be willing to put on uh, Tyler Huntley's plate. And we, we, we got to see how stuff is executed. We, we got to see. Because Tyler Huntley, one thing that he does uh, differently than Lamar Jackson is with spreading the ball around to different guys. That he has been doing. Um, so different guys will get involved. He, he doesn't uh, seem to play favorites. Everybody gets equal opportunity with Tyler Huntley. Um, so we, we will see uh, just how much that continues. Because that, that can be a good thing. Because if you just... Force feeding the same people, then other people could be open, or defenses could key on key in on those same people, and they could take those people away. So they could take your game away. But if you feeding it to different people all over the, the field and whatnot, then that makes it harder for defenses because they're like, man, where is this guy gonna throw to? Who's he gonna go to? Who does he really trust the most? And if you got big trust for everybody, then it gives everybody a chance, and defenses are really spread out. But if you only got big trust for a couple people, then that, keep, that allows defenses. It makes it easier for defenses. So seeing is believing, and we'll hopefully see something, some, some stuff that continues from both of Tyler Huntley's games. We're spreading the ball out, but some stuff that we haven't seen really this year from Tyler Huntley or Lamar to where the offense scores early and often, and they get that job done. You too, take